So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello there, this is Robin Norgren. I am the author of a book called Your Creative Peace, Find and Deepen Your Creative Voice While Connecting with God. You can find me over at www.josiesartschool.com or www.brightchildmontessori.com. I am a creativity and art teacher as well as a Montessori teacher. And what I have done um, throughout my career is I've taken creativity and Montessori philosophies and I've merged them together to make more of a hybrid uh, classroom curriculum that I use inside a classroom setting um, and that I also write and sell to those who'd be interested in trying it. So make sure and check me out if you're interested in any of those types of um, items for your classroom or even for your home setting. Right now, I'm going through the book that I wrote um, back in 2009. Uh, It's a a book that I wrote as I was trying to work out finding my own creative voice and not really seeing a clear-cut beginner's way to get at finding and using your creativity in a way that um, brought joy and healing and just took away any sort of... um, Uh, anxiety about just creating for the sake of um, joy and meditation as opposed to selling crafts and things like that. Anyway, so let's uh, get on with it. I'm starting now on the chapter called God as one who sees you. And the prompt that you would use if you're going along with me is uh, the creative prompt, declare freedom. The verse that sets the tone for this Um, chapter is Galatians 5 1 it is for freedom that Jesus has set you free stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery the phrase God Lord help me is one of those phrases that is organically moved into my vocabulary during my most trying moments it is a version of something my mother used to say as well she would say Lord have mercy I had not noticed this appearance of this phrase into my vocabulary until recently when the little boy whose house we stayed at while transitioning back from Germany, I'll be talking about that more later, asked me, why do you always say, Lord, help me? I answered, because I need to call on someone bigger than me when my strength is gone. This thing called isolation is no laughing matter. I have felt the depths of loneliness some days. Days like the ones I have previously talked about. I I felt it back in 2010 as well. In 2010, I moved to Germany to be near my husband, who had stationed there for um, with the military at Longetool, and we lived there for seven months. Here's the scenario: I lived in Germany, but it wasn't on a military base. It was in a German neighborhood with no connections to Americans or anyone who spoke more than minimal English and my daughter had just turned four years old. My husband worked nonstop 16-hour days, up to seven days a week. We moved there in the dead of winter from Arizona and lived in a basement of a German couple who spoke, spoke very little English. There was no preschool for my girl to attend and no children around to play that spoke English. We had no car, and the closest military base was about 20 minutes away by freeway, and no path to walk there, so we were at the mercy of whenever my husband was home to go anywhere. It was seven straight months with no break from motherhood, no adult interaction, a husband who was in a stressful job seeing Marines die on a regular basis. There, of course, were no date nights. Isolation from, isolation from friends due to time zone constraints and no American television. My daughter and I returned to the United States in August 2010. During those seven months away, I knew that I'd been productive creatively, 
but I guess I really did not take stock until a few people mentioned this. I recognize it now. I had changed quite a bit. All that change ironically occurred within that isolation. I felt like I needed to go to Germany, back to my birthplace. Initially, I did not understand why. But I do not think it was a coincidence that this all happened in Germany. My birthplace. And that was where my creativity went into overdrive. I created like it was water for a dying woman. Things came out of me that I look at now and go, how did I know to do that? Why did it take until I was 42 to even experience this kind of deep satisfaction? Why did it take breaking away from everything that defined me to tap into it? Why was I afraid to come back to the United States? Would I be able to sustain the changes? I'm still sifting through those answers. But I can tell you one thing. I do believe there was always an artist living in me. I was just looking to others to soothe that muscle rather than wanting to work that muscle for myself. But no longer. Now my mission is to help others find that find what may have been lost due to traumas beyond their control or simply because of fear. Here's some questions to think about. What recent place or season or period in your life was a marker for change? If some time has passed on that event, what additional insight have you gained from that experience? If you are still in the midst of this event or season, what ways can you utilize your creative toolbox to remind you that God sees you? Have you created something to mark the new space you're making in your life? A memorial for the feelings, attitudes you've, shif you've shifted or moved in the process? If not, consider creating something this week that would serve as a reminder of change and all the changes that you're making in your life and what it would look like if you were to create some sort of memorial to that. What form would it take? What medium would you use? When I came back to the United States, I came back with a life that was bursting with new energy. I was coming out of a cocoon that birthed a full-blown creative life. My heart was ready to come home to the United States and present this, quote, new, unquote, me. I felt excited to be able to infuse this new knowledge into my creative business, and I felt I had a huge support system that I was coming back to. One small problem. I had not taken into account the enormous amount of change I had gone through. I started to miss the isolation. The explanations I gave for needing time alone seemed odd when I once craved companionship so, so much. The words were not coming out right, and I was feeling awkward around my usual companions. Uncomfortable, unwelcome. Who puts this much energy into something with seemingly little return on investment? When I could show others what I'd been doing all those months, I met with some interesting comments. My work was described as cute or a nice hobby, something to pass the so time. No, that's not what my work was. My work was me. I was working on me. My inside was coming out. It was flowing and bleeding with the, the paint or any kind of medium I put on a page. I felt the loneliness I experienced in Germany following me, taking me into the shadows. I was beginning to feel that same isolation that I had experienced so many months ago in Germany. Yet, this creative thing was not a phase. This really was my life now. And was I okay with it? Think about this. Has God shown you something new about yourself that maybe you are finally ready to verbalize to others? If so, maybe first write it down. If you are unable to come to terms with this awareness, write about where the hesitation is coming from. Are there ways to put that new creative component into your life in a safe way where it could be just for your eyes only? On a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the most positive, how are you feeling about the time you are spending creatively? 
Have you found that you're becoming more aware of others around you who are creative? Are there new networks or groups being formed as a result of this journey? Is there a way you can lean into those new places more? Even as I sit back and think about that time when I first started being creative, I too was in that space where I thought, oh, it must be just a phase. I had nothing to do in Germany, and so this is why I was using all that time to just work on this this thing, and maybe it was just because it was so new, it, it would be vibrant, and then it would just um, fizz, fizzle out. But that's not what happened. Here we are today, um, close to 10 years later, and it ebbs and flows, obviously, with what is going on um, in my life. But at the same time, it's something that really defines me now. I remember I became most aware of this one time when I was started working uh, in my second job as a Montessori teacher. And someone had said to me, uh, because at that time I was working in outdoor environment, and I brought a lot of the creativity into that space. And they said, oh, I can't even imagine what your house looks like. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I guess that's true. I, and and uh, as I've gone and visited other houses, I realized, yeah, my house does look um, very different from other, other people's houses. It's very colorful. It is not um, this smooth transition with the eye from one space to another. It's very eclectic. But having someone speak that out to me with me not really recognizing it was really a fun kind of exercise in my brain to go, oh, you really have continued to be this creative person. Anyway, if you're interested in this book, it is available on my website and also over at Amazon. Um, So feel free to check it out if you'd like. Um, In the meantime, I will join you here again um, next time. Thanks for stopping by.